Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Uh, after I fully recover from the last two reviews that I've done, yeah, Rob Zombie's bastardization of the monsters and Prey, which was the latest film in the Predator franchise, a prequel to be exact, which just follows a, a Comanche named Naru, joins with her dog as they continue to hunt hoping that she'll become a hunter someday, especially when she discovers uh, the predator. Yes, which has some scenes where where the predator, you know, actually focusing on his point of view shots of ultra ray vision begins to show his target so it'll be ready to attack and slaughter you know, animals and humans and use them as their trophies. You know, by actually uh, drying out all of that skin and, and hair and, and it'll become like a skull. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, well, I didn't care for the movie. I know some people say it's the best movie since the first one. I'm sorry. I, I, I really don't believe that. Because the original movie still holds up. Arnold Schwarzenegger is, is the best of the world here when he played the role as Butch and he was lucky to defeat the Predator with his own skills I mean trust me he, he did it with his own skills you know he, he had to camouflage himself you know you know, paint himself with mud all over his body you know, cover himself with him and, and and tries to defeat him right away but of course he gets it's beaten up, almost got killed, so it's a trap, and the predator got what he was coming. Yeah, but when they try to do that scene and, and pray, it just, it just doesn't work. It just seems so dumbfounded. So vigorous. Uh, well, anyway, I don't want to deal with that anymore. I'm going to do a special review today since October's Halloween month as we continue here. I just uh, watched this on Disney Plus. Um, it's been a while because the last movie I watched was Hocus Pocus 2. I yet to watch a lot of stuff that's included because there's so many available. I mean, I, I know there's been a lot of TV shows, mostly ones from the MCU, Star Wars and stuff, and it's just, it's going to take a lot of time to watch these because I'm mostly busy with a lot of things, you know me. But there's this one special that's very um, exhilarating chilling, frilling, clever, but hey, I'm just happy that they did this in this visual style. It's called Werewolf by Night, um, which is a story in some ways, it's, it's like a 40s style horror movie that Universal was putting out, you know, such as The Wolfman, but it blends in like a hunting party. Yeah, a better hunting party than prey. <laughs> okay, well, we get the idea here. Um, but yeah, it, it follows a secret group of monster hunters as they compete to get the powerful relic that's being hidden inside this dangerous creature. But it kind of leads to what was happening in the story, which at this rate, there's going to be a werewolf coming around. Also, it's part of Phase 4 in the MCU, so, so that it continues to, to follow the continuity of other characters, of other shows and movies as it follows. Well, chances are you'll probably end up seeing them again in the future. So it'll be like you know, an, an Easter egg, or, or in some cases... Well, any other cameos that they'll show. Um, it stars Gail Garcia Bernal. Um, for those who don't know, 
he was in uh, Bad Education. Uh, that was the recent movie. But he was also in movies like The Motorcycle Diaries, Omoto's Perils, Itumama Taipian, Babel. And yes, he was even in the movie Coco. Yeah, Disney and Pixar film. Uh, Laura Donnelly, Harriet Sansom Harris, who you may remember her from Desperate Housewives and Frasier. Uh, Kurt R. Thatcher, Eugenie uh, Bonnerant, uh, Daniel J. Waltz, Leonardo Nam, Carrie Jones, with Jeffrey Ford, David Silverman, Wick Rosserman, and Richard Dixon. Of course, based on the Marvel comics, yeah, there, there were several of them, of each series that follows. It was written by Heather Quinn and Peter Cameron, and is directed by Michael Giacchino, yep, longtime film composer. He also composed this as well, but he's done many movies. That he composes. He always makes a very terrific score of any kind. So, this is his. Um, I think this might be his first um, special that he ever directed. And maybe someday he might end up directing more movies. Be aware there's going to be spoilers in this review. So, if you haven't seen the special yet, my advice is to check it out on Disney Plus or anywhere else if you're about to take the risk. So that way you can finally watch this video for yourself. But don't say I didn't warn you guys. Anyway, the special begins following the death of their leader, Ulysses Bloodstone. We meet five professional monster hunters, including Jack Russell, who is played by Gail Garcia Bernal, who are being summoned by Ulysses' widow named Brissa, who is played by Harriet Sampson Harris. They're about to go straight to Bloodstone Manor where they're instructed to participate in a competitive hunting party in order to determine to become the new leader who has willed the powerful Bloodstone so they'll be able to be able to summon everything that they have to do. Meanwhile we meet Ulysses Extrain's daughter Elsa who's played by Laura Donnelly he dislikes the family tradition of killing monsters, had arrived just to compete for the Bloodstone, despite Barbarossa warning her against doing so. So the hunt begins in a large maze on the grounds of the manor, with the captured monster hidden around each of these mazes that's being implanted with the Bloodstone as the hunter's quarry. Uh, we follow the, the encounter of Elsa that Jack eventually bumped into, and then he begins to found the monster, or perhaps the monster found him, named Ted, who became a friend of his, who was searching for all this time, so it, it pretty much shows that he isn't hunting the creature, he just wants to help him out to escape, and the attempt to rescue. While Elsa goes around fighting and killing all the other hunters around because they were under attack. So Russell leaves Ted to carry out his escape plan as Elsa eventually hides straight into the mausoleum where it has all these uh, coffins around as she has been locked inside just to hit herself out of the rest of the hunters. But Jack eventually got inside too, and, and they both got locked. So now they're trying to find a way to get out of there. And Elsa just had went straight to one of the coffins and just broken out and was ready to grab the keys. So that way they can unlock themselves out of there. And they form a promise where... where Jack is going to rescue Ted, and then he'll be able to give Elsa the Bloodstone. And the plan was working out pretty well at first, even though one hunter came by, and then Ted eventually arrives, 
and attacks that hunter by crushing his skull and rip his body out. So then, um, already Jack actually has the beeping device. He was going to place it somewhere into the wall. So that way they'll distract them and to make sure the creature is like right there in that wall. But it was too late, of course. So he had some trouble. And then next thing you know, by the time Elsa finally got the Bloodstone, Barissa and the rest of the gang had captured her and Jack just uh, before he ends up touching the Bloodstone as he was about to capture it. And then he got the curse. So it turns out that yes, he is indeed going to become a werewolf by night. But unfortunately, since Elsa and Jack are being trapped in a cage by Barissa and her gang, that's, yeah, including the hunters around that are still alive, that now um, he actually warned her that they got to wait until full moon in order for him to transform into the werewolf. But that's going to only be five days. So now Barissa has stole the bloodstone and was ready to use the power, which at this rate ends up using it on Jack, and that's where he transformed into the werewolf and was ready to save Elsa and attack all of the hunters and the guards, you know, slaughtering them, slashing them, mauling them and all into pieces, and also try to kill uh, Barissa too. While Elsa came in for the help uh, of Jack by actually killing all the other hunters and guards too. So now Elsa have finally lived. She survived for the attacks. I mean, yes, yeah, she did have some minor cuts here and there. Some, I mean, she was bleeding uh, during the, the fight scenes and all. Uh, but Jack had finally escaped as a werewolf and trying to make sure Elsa's all right. So now Elsa's all alone uh, with the butler. The only one survived um, out of the, the group. So now she's all alone. She's listening to music, which turned out to be Somewhere Over the Rainbow by Julie Garland from the movie The Wizard of Oz. And... and since the whole uh, special is shot in black and white, it actually transforms into color, too. So now both Jack is alone with Ted, since he already transforms back to his human self. And now they're just, they're friends together, you know, just getting ready for their next adventure. <laughs> Which at this rate, they're about to go out and have some sushi. <laughs> so let's so leave it at that. Oh, wow. I mean, this is definitely thrilling and chilling right away. You got to give it all to uh, Michael Cicino because it really shows how skillful he really was as a director, um, despite being a long time, you know, film composer. I mean, it really shows that, yes, he, he can start doing movies like this someday because he did join in with with a cinematographer to create the black and white uh, shots. It just looks incredibly chilling as we speak. Yeah, they even throw in some, all this film dirt and grain inside. Um, as you can recognize it, even though it was shot in scope, um, it kind of really um, captures the spirit of all these 40s uh, horror films that Universal has been putting out at the time. Now this is how you write smart characters, more intelligent, and someone that you can care for than what they did in, in the movie Prey, okay? Because Prey just doesn't do any jack shit. It's also like um, the movie The Wolfman, but imagine you know, Lon Chaney Jr. joining in with a creature <laughs> as a best friend. I mean, I think this is perfect how they did it. The attacks in, in the special was very brutal. Um, yeah, the violence was, was incredibly um, 
um, very uh, gruesome and you know all, all their body parts are ripped apart you know their heads and 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 the rest of their their limbs and their arms and and, and all there's gore in the special too there's a little bit of that but not much um, um, they did use practical effects uh, for for the werewolf by night and and also Ted the creature but they also blend in with CGI yeah for the transitions uh, the powerful bloodstone and the transition between black and white and color uh, which is digital effects by the way and all the movements too of the creatures you know and even when they started crushing them and ripping their bodies apart yeah um, the cast is excellent. Uh, Gail Garcia Bernal did an excellent job playing both Jack and, and Werewolf. And so is uh, Laura Donnelly as Elsa Bloodstone. Yeah, I mean, she really is indeed very strong. I mean, she started out as pretty icy at first, but then next thing you know, um, she became as likable as ever. I mean, she's very strong. You know, she knew that she didn't want to be part of this, but she had... To take the stone so that way you know she'll be able to run she can become the next leader and, and she'll be able to fix things right you know set things right and jack you know is doing his best to help because he's a very likable and very kind guy i mean you really felt for him you felt bad for him but he knows what he's trying to do to help his friend you know ted because he didn't want this creature to be attacked that's for sure, and, and the fact that they got to stand up against this villain, who's indeed the widow of Ulysses Bloodstone, um, Barissa. Yeah, Harriet Sampson Harris uh, did a terrific job playing the villain, and it really shows how she can really she can really be in control. Um, they really took a lot of guts and liberty to. To actually um, put this in for a, a 55 uh, minute special. So it feels like a short movie. Um, yeah, maybe it could have been two hours long, but that's okay. It didn't need to be. Um, that's just the way they wanted to go for it. And through its gothic style, um, they shot um, the, the entire maze uh, straight at uh, Trajoyev Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, where they created all these uh, incredible mazes around. Uh, it looked like it was kind of built uh, by scratch. Um, and they also used um, the scene where uh, the butler had to open up uh, the coffin by, you know, swinging around uh, this one particular cane. And it opens it up, and that's where you see Ulysses um, explaining about this entire um, competition that they're participating and has and they also left them something this is sort of like a eulogy um, which um, it kind of talks almost like like one of those fortune tellers that you see inside the booth at a local uh, carnival yeah looks like one too I, I like that. And, and then the other stuff, too, that they have uh, straight inside the manor where it has all these uh, all these walls. that ha has all these creatures that's hanging around. Yeah, they're using them as trophies and all. And decorative. And, and it has, you know, all these poster frames and, and all this um, warranty um, stuff that they got inside. This particular room just looks beautiful. And it has a nice soundtrack uh, that they put in there. You know, they, it gives it an incredibly chilling score by Chichino himself. And i got to say, Chichino did an excellent job with, this, with his directing duties. And it really shows. I mean, this is sort of his take on how he used to shoot uh, films and eight millimeter when he was young so this would have been his big opportunity because um, 
you know, he wanted to go for this visual style. Yeah. So it's it's really really awesome. So uh, anyway, and the writing is just very solid by Heather Quinn and Peter Cameron. They really knew what they were doing. See, that's how you do it right. You know, you don't go for something that's political and, and everything. You don't need that. You can make something that's more creative and imaginative. And you'll just have fun with it. And you can even throw in some jokes, too. Even some jokes that are, that are more colorful this way. And more hilarious. You can do that. But just have fun with its theme and elements right here. And that's what they did with Werewolf by Night. Anyway, that's that's the special, and I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.